Hello and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory we're going to be talking about takeoff speeds. So it can be a little confusing, there's a lot of them. So this diagram will show you all of them in order as they come up during the takeoff roll and will also in red show you the requirements as in which have to be greater than others, greater than or equal in some cases. So let's start right at the bottom. The first speed we're going to encounter is VMCG, minimum control on the ground is the speed which provides directional control of the aircraft in the event of the critical engine failure. V1, our next speed, is the decision speed. It's the speed at which we decide in a malfunction whether to go, continue the takeoff, or reject the takeoff. Next would be VMBE. This is maximum brake energy speed. It's the speed at which an aircraft can initiate a rejected takeoff and stay within limits within temperature limits for the brakes. Next on the line is VMCA. This is minimum control air. Similar to minimum control on the ground, it's the minimum speed which provides directional control in the air in the event of a critical engine failure. VR, rotate. It's the speed at which the pilot initiates the rotation of the aircraft, starts pulling the nose up. Next in line we have VS. We all know V-stall, I've talked about it in other videos. Stall speed of the aircraft, where no lift is generated over the wings, or little lift. VMU, the next one, is minimum unstick. It's essentially the speed at which the manufacturer has demonstrated that the aircraft can safely lift off without demonstrating any dangerous characteristics of any sort. Uh, next, VLO, lift off, as it says in the name, the speed at which the aircraft will lift off the ground. And the big one, V2. V2 is the takeoff safety speed, or one engine in operative max angle speed. It's very close to that in most aircraft. And it's the speed which needs to be achieved by 35 feet above the runway in the takeoff configuration. So let's talk about the relationship between the speeds. I hope my little black lines and the red greater than, less than or equal than symbols in between the lines make sense to you. So let's start by talking about V1. V1 has to be greater than VMCG. This is because we need directional control in order to make a decision. It must be less than VMB. Otherwise, if we initiated a brake within that margin, uh, we could run the risk of brake failure. And V1 has to be less than or equal to VR. Of course, the decision speed cannot come later than VR, but it could come at the same time. It could coincide. Next, VR, that must always be greater than VMCA. So in the same way as V1, we need to maintain that directional control in the air to be able to start the rotation. So it cannot be equal, it has to be greater. Now, our V liftoff speed, that has to be greater or equal to VR. It can be equal, should be greater normally, uh, and it also must be greater than minimum stick, stall speed, and VMCA. It must be greater than all those three. And the final one is V2. V2, nice and easy to remember, is greater than everything. So what conditions affect V speeds? Well, V speeds can be affected by an array of things. Aircraft configuration, aircraft weight, gross weight, performance, runway characteristics, runway condition, atmospheric conditions. So I hope this has clarified any confusion you may have had regarding all these takeoff speeds. They can be a little hard to get into your head. Once you start using them on a daily basis, they become much simpler. Uh, this will help you a lot to pass your ATPL exams. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. All the best. Till next time.